We're back. Welcome to PRI News on WAAD with our special live broadcast from Matthews Hall on campus. This is the final night of our fall fun drive, and we would appreciate your donations for listening at home at 312-379-8638. Or come visit us on stage during the broadcast and tell us how much you would like to pledge. Absolutely, we cannot stress this enough. The cost of broadcasting continues to rise higher and higher every year. And the dependability of some funding sources remains uncertain. We need your help. Your call has never been more important. All we need is your name, contact information, how much you want to give, and how you want to pay. Please take a moment to call 312-379-8638. I don't think they heard you, Jenna. 312-379-3638 or you can conveniently go online to waab.in.us.org slash funds slash marketing slash fall 2013 slash Matthews Hall slash donations slash Lafayette West Lafayette slash please.html. Let's take a moment and hear from a few of our generous donors. Hi, I'm Fred Thompson. I love WAB. I listen to it every single morning. I've been donating for over 30 years to get the news that's from the perspective I enjoy. If all my workers listening to too as they're chopping down trees in the various parks, making roadways, passing through the area. Won't you join us and pull out some of the spare change from your pocket, donate it down, WAAB. Thank you. God bless. Amen. I've come to, to express my support for this local PRI radio station. I'm Jeremiah Dole. I'm Jeremiah Dole LLC. And I think it's really important to express our local support. And if you find something that you enjoy, throw a little bit of cash their way. You might want to consider the $120 level of giving. At that level, you receive a package of two LED pin lights, one gold, and one black for you Boilermakers. And both pin lights come with erasers as our thank you to you. <laughs> Let's take a look at the news of the evening. Tonight, Wednesday, Saturday, a new scholarship is being formed at Purdue University in honor of the hit amateur chemist show, Breaking Bad. Encouraging the youth of today to pursue STEM careers. Angie Bullock of Purdue's National and International Scholarship Office thinks this particular scholarship will excite those in impoverished, drug-addled neighborhoods across America. The sheer number of students that have been inspired by this amateur chemistry show is simply remarkable. At no other time have we had this many students apply to the College of Science with an interest in medicinal and pharmaceutical chemistry. <laughs> We're really grateful for the inspiration the show, Breaking Bad, has provided to the youth of America. That scholarship will be available starting in the 2014 school year. Go ahead, Sarah. For tonight, Carl Birkins is here with an on-the-street perspective on the upcoming annexation of Purdue University by the city of West Lafayette. Carl, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm not that far from you. Um, <laughs> loud and clear. So we're out here in Matthews 210, talking to some of the people regarding the, the annexation in West Lafayette. Um, how long have you lived at Purdue University? About three months. <laughs> so you're part of the, the transient student population. Are Do you two live together? Um, we live on the same floor. On the same, you don't own property here? <laughs> What about you, sir? How long have you been here at Purdue University? I don't live here. <laughs> Anyone over here? Have you? When did you sign the lease? What well, lease? <laughs> Are you involved in Purdue student government? No. <laughs> I think Mayor Dennis was correct in assuming that the student population is not going to be a threat to anything in city council. <laughs> Back to you, Sam. Emily? Sounds like college students are as involved in local government as ever. <laughs> Over the summer, the Lafayette Park Board recently closed the Lafayette Municipal Golf Course. Since that time, over five individual corporations have shown interest in developing the area. The Wabash River Enhancement Corporation for Fun and Profit 
is planning on developing the state's first drink as you throw Shrewsby Golf Course. <laughs> Keg stations will be installed at each hole, along with biodegradable cup dispensers for the environment. The city expects to bring in an additional $1.6 million from the inclusion of alcohol at this site. <laughs> Specials are set to coincide with breakfast club and home football games. Neighbor Asses is a new civic organization seeking to update the city code in Lafayette. The current ordinance, 10.01.020, reads it is unlawful for any person to own, keep, or breed any jackasses, goats, elephants, chicken, or other livestock. At the last Lafayette City Council meeting, several citizens were questioning the ability to amend this ordinance. Enforcement. That's the first thing that comes to mind. How are we going to enforce the proposed amendment given the number of assholes who live in the greater Lafayette area? This is only going to encourage people and end in bloodshed. My constituents believe that asses are smelly, vile, and rarely looked after. I'm not sure how we can make sure no assholes move within city limits by this ordinance. The county currently allows for a maximum of three asses to live on one property with special permitting. The city estimates it can make $1.2 million from the proposed permits necessary to allow jackasses. This probably shouldn't impact anything in the annexation, I don't think. No, I would doubt that. The new US 231 bypass opened recently. If you have not yet transversed this magnificent road, we have a preview of the experience. Let's go to our live feed, accessible on our website, waab.in.us.org slash services slash live slash audio slash us slash 231.html question mark play equals one. Let's take a quick listen. <laughs> Yes, yes I am, Susan. We're here. Well, we're gonna go over here. But no, just smiling. Let's see if we can make it. So we have the, the Hoosier State. How many times have you ridden the Hoosier State this past week, sir? I have not ridden it ever. And what about you, ma'am? You must have ridden the Hoosier State in the last month. Yep, five times. Five times? Yeah, and how much did, did that cost you? Subsidies. They're made of medicine. <laughs> what about you gentlemen over here? How many times have you ridden the Hoosier State? <laughs> Was your experience enjoyable? <laughs> no. How would you improve it? I mean, I believe Mayor Dennis and Rose Worsky constantly tune into WAAB and they're listening to your voice. Free, you wrote it. I think we're seeing a message here. Pardon me, pardon me. Did you ride the Hoosier State? No. <laughs> Has anyone ridden the Hoosier State besides this, this young lady over here? Show of hands. I believe NDOT was correct in their assessment, Edgar, Emily. No one rides the Hoosier State. Back to you on the stage. Faith Northwest, a religious commercial entity along Northwestern Avenue, has applied for a variance to the Tippecanoe New County Area Planning Connection to start construction on a queer rehabilitation and torture center on its West Lafayette campus. <laughs> Pastor Boo here has recently stated, It's our goal to teach those who would choose the non-Christian lifestyle extremely poor decision in the eyes of our Lord. And that this so 
selfish decision not only affects themselves, but also the community in which they live, spiraling us down into a cesspool of decadence and despair. <laughs> Amen. The city of West Lafayette has begun its initial talks with local banks to help secure funding for Faith Northwest's latest community service project. The city in 2012 secured bonds for Faith West's mental reprogramming and sterilization center along Northwestern Avenue. Talks in an underground passage from the Purdue campus allowing students to easily transport suspected queers to the center are also rumored to be in the works. President Daniels was unable to comment in time for this broadcast. Pastor Booyers also wanted us to note that services at the Northwestern Avenue facility are at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays, and everyone is welcome. I know I'll be there. Won't you, Amy? My partner and I are definitely making it a priority, Frank. <laughs> After talking to millions of Hoosiers, the Indiana Family Institute for Traditional Morals, Values, and Money have jubilantly released a poll showing that most Hoosiers really are the bigots that everyone knows them to be. 84% of Hoosiers, when asked if they would like to see Indiana become more white and Christian and less educated, stated that they have already begun the process in pursuing these goals at the neighborhood level. Traditionalists. Yeah, this tradition is the way it's been since 1776. It's the way it's going to be change. since my pa moved here. That's right. Since 1909. That's right. It's the way it's going to be. Woo. You know, we're, we're going to keep it. One man and a woman. Yeah, that's all. You know, make some kids or something. Amen. 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 To help the IFITFDM combat this image, the Coalition for Backwards and Retrograded States has pledged over $10 million to assist in the passage of an upcoming constitutional amendment to legally define Hoosiers as white, heterosexual, missionary only practicing Christians with a high school diploma or equivalency. For a different perspective, we go to this week's Story Corps. <laughs> Welcome to the StoryCorps podcast. October marks StoryCorps' 10th anniversary, and to celebrate, we've compiled our favorite stories of love and gratitude. Now that we can write our own definition of marriage, I am suing the state of Indiana to allow me to redefine marriage as being between one man, me, and all the following. My favorite wife, Ginger. My other wife, Stacy, who is not as thin as she used to be. My blow-up doll from the Asian countries, Lisa Wang. My loyal dog, Marjorie, and any of her puppies that survived the coyotes. My 1995 Ford F-350 with mud tires. And the shop vac I experiment with. I love all of these with all my heart, and Doma is gone. Try to stop me from following my heart. That was Stephen Mithmeyer and his spouses Ginger, Stacy, Lisa, Marjorie, F-350, and the shop van. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more stories like Stephen's, please, please donate generously to WAAB. Did you know WAAB is your radio station? And your radio station? And your radio station? We're the one that wakes you up in the morning and gets you through the day with the news and information and entertainment that you always expect and hope for. But if you, or you, or you, or you, actually own this station, you'd be paying more than $5,000 a day in expenses. Can you imagine all that? I can. <laughs> but the beauty of public radio is that you receive all the benefits, that $5,000 daily investment, and all you have to pay is what you see fit. At 312-379-8638. Or give online at waab.in.us.org. Or 312-379-8638. Let's hear from a few more of our generous donors. <laughs> Alright, my name is Susan June, and I wanted to recommend that everyone donate to WAAB. I find that the reason I donated was because when I keep it on in the background of my office or in my car, people assume that I'm really smart, and that really helps me out. I did just donate. Hello, I'm former Purdue President Edward Elliott. I want to thank you for supporting WAAB, and if you haven't yet, 
Halloween is coming up and I might pay you a visit. <laughs> we would like to thank Randall and Georgia from Lafayette for their generous donation of 17 American dollars at 312-379-8638 is the number they called. But I tell you, Randall and George also brought up a very good point. Our bias. In the interest of addressing accusations and several FCC fairness doctrine violations towards PRI and WAAB, we would like to express our support for a very special, nationally notable person who we can safely say represents us all. Carl, in order to comply with FCC regulations, will you please join us on stage now? Yeah, come on out, Carl. Yeah. Stacy, glad to be here. Glad everyone else is here for a live broadcast for WAAB. What was that number again? That's 312-379-8638. 312-379-8638. So some of this will help us get rid of some of our, our charges being leveled against us by the FCC for our perceived bias. Um, yeah, at any time you want to take it away. FCC may be after us. Uh, it happens. We'll be thanking you for your time. The number one more time is 312. 3738. Three, eight, three, eight. Three, yeah, 312. Three, that's right. 379. Do you need the address eight, again, the web address? <laughs> um, this is just WAAB.in.us.gov.org slash marketing. Slash fall 2013. Matthews Hall slash donations, donations slash West Lafayette, Lafayette, West Lafayette, Lafayette slash, slash fall Plea. plan drive slash, slash special night. Well, that's the new one. Okay. That one's not available. Okay. So, <laughs> this, yeah, this is WAAB signing off. Thank you very much. Our cheesy joke contest. We, we're going to start with Chris Manger. What happens when you throw a blue rock in the water? What? It sings. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Muhammad Abdul Najam. Yes. Okay, so I tried to think of some cheesy jokes, but I couldn't come up with any Gouda ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tim Franklin. Oh. Okay, so this couple. On their honeymoon, they went to Russia, right? They were going to Siberia for some reason. And they're in this little village, and they have a tour guide, right? His name, his name is Rudolph, right? They call him Rudy, right? He's this big Nordic guy, and he's got this red hair, and he's, like, loud. And so in this little village, and it starts to snow, and, and, and Rudy, he's like, oh, this rain would never stop. And the husband's like, honey, it's snowing. And she's like, shh, Rudolph the Red knows rain, dear. <laughs> Mike Fidero. Hi, again. Oh, that's a good one. Rudy, the red. 
<laughs> what do you call a grizzly bear that gets caught in the rain? It's a grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. Thank you. Zachary Bale. about the electrician who just wanted to get into show business? No. He's directing currently. <laughs> okay, last but not least, Matt Geyer. Okay, so the new Pokemon just came out, so this is gonna be a Pokemon themed joke. So get ready. How do you get 100 Pokemon on a bus? Catch them all. You Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the winner of the Cheesy Joke Contest has been chosen, and it is Mike Dodaro. Mike, come up and claim your prize. Your prize is Swiss cheese. I want, I want to thank you all <laughs> for this. Um, they're, uh, they're telling me that I'm taking too much time. They're giving me the flashing light. This so. doesn't require speech. I thank you so much for this. <laughs> <laughs>